Hi guys and ladies, I have a guest coming for dinner tomorrow who is crazy about curry dishes. I would sure like to learn to make curry. What about bluegill curry? I studied some recipes and now I think I can do it. And all I need is one more item. <laughs> you guessed it, it's the bluegill. I'm gonna make my first cast right here off the top. Incessant rains and now snow have caused the lake to turn muddy. So let's start out with live bait like this mealworm. Maybe the fish can smell it even if they can't see it. I just put the worm on a little jig. It's freezing out here, so I'll stop talking so we can start fishing. Beauty! Okay! Fish number one. I don't need too many. Oh. This is all happening straight down under the boat. That's a nice fish. At the end of the cast. <laughs> Look at the size on this one. Their colors are kind of muted in the muddy water, but they're great eating. In cold weather, little lures or live bait almost always catch some bluegill. Like that. Wow! Holy gosh, look at that one. <laughs> Beautiful. A monster bluegill. You know, people new to bluegill fishing always ask me what I do after I cast. Well, I let the bait fall for a couple of feet and then I reel in a bit and let it fall and reel in. Always waiting for that tap. Like that. Oh, whoa. Yes. There's a nice one, huh? If you don't want to use live bait, you could use a plastic grub like this on the end of your jig. And you do the very same thing. Throw it out, let it sink. Wait for the tap, reel in. It works. Wow! Look at this monster bluegill. All right. You see, you don't need live bait. Looky here, we caught six nice bluegill, and that's more than we need because this recipe also includes shrimp. So let's get back to the house and fillet our petulant pets. And tomorrow, it's bluegill and shrimp curry. Here it is, tomorrow. And despite the miserable cold and wind, we were able to get enough bluegill to give us over a pound of these nice fillets. Look at these guys. <laughs> and we'll add this to an equal amount of shrimp to see if we can make a satisfying curry. They call these shrimp super colossal. They're about the size of prawns, I think. I'm making this up as I go along, but I'm going to quarter our fish fillets. Now for added busy work, 
let's just cut our colossal shrimp in half. I'm trying to grate this ginger. I'm really not sure what I'm doing. But then again, when am I ever sure? I always get anxiety attached when I start a recipe that I've never done before. Let's get going. Here's a half a stick of butter. I'm going to melt it and cover the bottom. Here's something quick and easy. Already chopped onions. Let's add those. Eight ounces. My onions are all fragrant. And now I'm going to add our finely chopped minced garlic. And our finely chopped minced and grated ginger. I'm going to keep sauteing this now for three minutes. Time is up. Now look what I have here. Coconut milk. Low in carbs. This is not in the recipe, but a lot of curry dishes, maybe most of them, have chopped tomatoes or tomatoes of some sort. This is optional. Two sliced up red bell peppers. I don't know about you, but I love this stuff. This is curry powder. Oh, it smells so good. So let's add it, two tablespoons. We've got some vigorous simmering going on here. Here's about a quarter teaspoon, maybe a little less, of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Now I'm going to add the juice of one whole lime. Now I'm going to let this simmer away for like uh, eight minutes, nine minutes. Here's something else not in the recipe, cardamom. I've been reading up on curry dishes. Lots of them have cardamom. I hope no Indian people are watching me because I know this is not authentic curry. Not even close. But look, sriracha. How about we put, oh, a tablespoon. It's been 10 minutes, but our bell peppers are still a little too firm, al dente. So let's keep this on a low simmer, put the lid on, and we'll go another, say, five minutes. I'm sure our bell peppers are tender enough now. Look how nicely the sauce thickened up. Here's what it's all about. Here's our shrimp, and here's our fish, bluegill. You have to stir it all up. And once you're done with that, then you cover it and simmer it for like six or seven minutes more. It's been seven minutes, it's done. Watch. The shrimp is all pinky and my fish is ready to fall apart. I'm gonna plate this up with some rice. Ah, ah, ah. It's going to be oniony fake rice. It's the same recipe I used last week. I'll have it in the notes. Cauliflower, actually. I've got some lightly dried cilantro here. I'm just gonna sprinkle some on for decor. I'm just going to place this in a warm oven until our curry-loving guest arrives. I might as well tell you all who that guest is. It's Miss Lulu Cheeks, the famous restaurant and food critic. And she's about to join me here for dinner tonight. And I'm over the moon delighted. Uh, unfortunately, even after decades of courting, she seems resistant to marriage. And I'm thinking it's because she doesn't see me as being compassionate, empathetic enough, and loving enough. I, I need to do more to be supportive to build her up. I just have to get a taste of this. Here's some fish. Oh, mmm, this is delicious. I can't stop eating. Mmm, there's a little spice I get. And everything else is Indian flavor. You think you're in an Indian restaurant. I know this is not authentic, but it sure tastes good and Indian-like to me. Oh, I love it. Mmm. It's once again my honor to be here with the famous celebrity restaurant and food critic, Miss Lulu Cheeks. And thank you so much for joining me at my shoddy, shaky chateau. And you had a chance to gobble up my bluegill and shrimp curry. 
with bogus rice, of course, and I'd like to know what you thought of it. It was very good. I, of course, I love curry, and you did a really good job. It had lovely flavors, and it was and it smelled really good when I walked in, and the the fish was done well, and the, and the shrimp was very lovely also. It was, a, and the rice, as usual, was tasty Thank and a you. good good accompaniment for the Thank curry. Thank you so much. Yes. I knew you loved curry. I Thank do. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Lulu, remember the other night when you said you were a moron? You don't really think you're a moron now, do you? No, but you were sad that night and I didn't want you to feel all alone. Huh? Oh. Can I have a hug? I'm this for like three minutes.